Well, I just had a very, very lovely, fun uh, trip. <clears throat> I, I don't, you know, I don't know that you want to hear about it. Uh, you, you can follow Instagram and stuff. I'll probably be posting some photos from it. Um, I, well, okay, you know the big circle thing? I, I wrote this story. Um, oh, boy. George, that's, it's having search problems, isn't it? Yeah, the, the, I think the WordPress site that we're running the Pacific Daily Times on is using like Flash or something and everyone's sick and tired of Adobe. It started with uh, the iPad 2, did it? Apple stopped supporting Flash. I, but anyhow, some some dependency, some little tiny program somewhere, because a website has lots of programs running to make it work, right? Something isn't letting you use the search tool. So I need to get that figured out. I mentioned it last week. You know, the, the Linux community is downsizing uh, 32-bit support here soon, which means everyone's going to get more focused. We're all getting more focused. This is really weird. But I, so I, I, you probably can't go search it now, but the big circle article that I did, I'll tell you what, I need to re-record it anyway. So it's going to be on YouTube and it'll probably appear in the, I, I might, I might, I might even put it in the letter podcast, but the, the big circle, this place I had a dream about and I didn't know it was a place and I kept seeing the color orange and it was weird. I went there and apparently, I mean, I, I was in Hong Kong and I talked with people from that area and they're really excited. They're, th they're looking at this post from what 2014 happened before that. They're looking for that, that and they're going, wow. So I've been talking with lots of Christians who are really excited about praying. They don't like Sunday morning. They don't like Sunday boring, you know, boring Sunday morning. Don't like it. Jesus is real. Um, he's a re he's real. He really heals, and you don't have to go to a building to meet him. He's real. And I've met a whole bunch of Christians in that area just over the weekend, which is just awesome. I mean, it's really turning into something, and I'm going to be blogging about it in coming weeks. But the the interesting thing last week, I said that Ubuntu's developers were stopping this 32-bit support and everyone's getting more focused because they won't have to make two versions of every single thing that they ever write. Well, there's more that I found out and I'm going to tell you the backstory with this. So not all of this is news. Long ago, if you know anything about Ubuntu, you, you, you is the only vowel in Ubuntu. It's Zulu. Figure it out and Google it. They used Gnome. G-N-O-M-E. Now, these guys decided you're supposed to pronounce the GN as a GN. So I'm mispronouncing about English standards, but they want to call it GNOME and GNU, G-N-U. So GNOME was the original desktop that they used with Ubuntu desktop. Des or Ubuntu was made to be core Linux, not beautiful like Windows. Just run it from a command prompt like DOS. So that it, it awesome for web servers. It or any server. I mean, if you got a computer geek, you turn the computer on, you get it set, and let it go. You don't. You don't need beautiful Windows. That's what Ubuntu was meant to be. But they put a desktop on it so that you can use it at home in the office and do stuff. I mean, you can't. You can't browse the web web from a command prompt. So originally, Ubuntu came with GNOME version uh, two. I think it was whatever. Gnome 3 came out, and the guys at Canonical, the company that, that owns Ubuntu, like Microsoft owns Windows, they got irritated with the bugginess and the weirdness in Gnome 3. Now, you'd think they were Christian, because when they didn't like the colors and the curtains, rather than making it work, they said, we don't like this Gnome version 3, we're starting our own. And so Ubuntu went out, or Canonical went out, and... They made their own thing. They made their own desktop. Now, th th this is where it really gets interesting. They were splitting off from Gnome, it's just uh, this other company group running the desktop, 
to make their own desktop. And what did they call their split off, their their church split, if we will, of of software? They called it Unity. <laughs> As a Unity in name only. It was annoying, and they know it. The, the guys at, at Canonical know that Unity was annoying. I spent a long time fixing it so that I install it and my little special script fixes a lot of the nuisances. It was good in a lot of ways. It's called Unity. I'm, I'm podcasting, recording on it right now. I don't mind it. Once you fix it. Uh, but, but it, it had, it had its problems, but Canonical was spending all this money to fix it. Now, recently and shortly thereafter, Gnome 3 got their act together and, and it wasn't buggy anymore. And they've also got XFCE and they've also got KDE and they've got others, um, Cinnamon from the guys that make Linux Mint. There, there are lots of desktop environments, but they went off and did their own thing. Well, now that's costing too much money, and so they're downsizing it. They're they're complete. I think Canonical's got about seven hundred employees, and they're letting thirty people go because they're losing so much money developing all. I mean, they're 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 reinventing the wheel. They're 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 doing what someone else is already doing because they don't like how they're doing it, and they're consolidating. And here's the interesting thing about this: Ubuntu eighteen o four, I believe. It, you know, it could be 1710, George. In one of the upcoming Ubuntu releases, I think it's 1710, it's the one after this, there won't be any more Unity desktop. They are going to go back to using GNOME. GNOME is this other group of people that make the desktop environment, and they're just going to say, okay, we're going to do the boring, ugly server side to make it work on the back end. You guys in your beautiful desktop environment body work, Go for it. You paint the car. We're just going to work on the engine. And everyone's going to get more done. Um, desktop developers aren't going to have to help them you know, as much. They're going to be able to focus on GNOME or, or XFCE, which is also incredibly simple and awesome. So I see people dropping their side projects. People are no longer trying to do everything themselves. They're cooperating a lot better in the Linux developing world. And when I was in Hong Kong this weekend, looking, you know, talking to the Christians that I had a dream about in their city, and they're asking me about prayer walks and, and all this stuff. You got, you got to know the background to understand this. is a big circle. Maybe you can search Jesse Steele, Pacific Daily Times, big circle, and find it that way um, and, and before I get it recorded. But they, they were talking to me, and this weekend, Easter Sunday... All the local pastors in that part of that specific zone of Hong Kong, they all got together for their annual Easter massive and mass uh, Christian worship, worship uh, church service. And I happened to be there that day. So now that unity in name only <clears throat> is gone vis a vis Linux. Uh, we're specializing, we're focusing, our attention is less divided, we're going to get more done. Uh, that's, that's cool and awesome, isn't it? Well, um, as far as... Uh, now, this Ubuntu Unity desktop has inspired Canonical to, to make Ubuntu work on mobile devices. They're downsizing that, but another guy who loves it is going to pick up and carry that. No, well, it'll be interesting to see where the Ubuntu for mobile stuff goes because it, it, Canonical's dropping it, but another guy's picking it up because it's open source. So that's the news and related, but not the same. I'm going to get to the point. There are two types of reasons people predict the future. The first type is common to everyone. We try to predict the future to see how well we know the past to guide us to accurately anticipate what will happen next. The second reason is more of the psychopathic reason, and unfortunately is the hidden reason for many of us. The second reason for predicting the future is because we prefer our prediction to become the future. Sometimes this is called wishful thinking. Believing something will happen and agreeing that something should happen are two different things. Don't be confused. And that's the point. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.